Ask yourself this question. Are you happy with the quarterbacks that are in the Bearcats quarterback room right now? Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. Thank you very much for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. We're free and available everywhere you get your podcasts, including right here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to our Lockdown Bearcats YouTube channel and follow it to get an alert every time we drop a new episode. My name is Alex Frank, your host each and every day right here on Lockdown Bearcats, where today we are presented by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Lockdown. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown today to get started. We are part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team. Every day. So the question I asked you in the cold open, as we like to call it here on the Locked On Podcast Network, the the question I asked you is one that has an answer or one that the answer to could determine how you feel about the Bearcats in the second transfer portal window, which, and I'm still new to, well, I shouldn't say new. I've been covering a college beat for almost six years, and there's a lot to it. But what really stands out to me is how short that second transfer portal window is. It's two weeks, May 1st through May 15th. That's what the portal window this week is, or this year is, two weeks. So looking at the quarterback room right now, you've got Emory Jones, you've got Ben Bryant, you've got Brady Drogas, you've got Evan Prater, and yes, there's there's Brady Lichtenberg. But realistically, I think the starting quarterback job right now is going to come down to Emory Jones and Ben Bryant. Maybe Evan Prater. Brady Jorgosh has been doing well from what we've been told. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to Ben Bryant, who we know is a pocket passer, and then Emory Jones, who's, who's a dual threat. Ask yourself this question, though. As I said, are you happy with the quarterback situation right now, or do you want – the Bearcats to go out and get another quarterback. But you look at the quarterbacks that are available. You look at the quarterbacks that are available in the transfer portal. And if you wonder how you can find out who is in the transfer portal, what I do or what I did today or yesterday is – I went to Athlon Sports, and they list every single player who's in the transfer portal, where they were previously, and where they're going to next. And then they tell you, and and if they don't have, or if that player has not transferred yet, or committed somewhere, they put a question mark. So what's interesting to me is how many players there are in this portal. I mean, you go down the offensive line list, there's about 500 of those. But what they do is they list every player that's still in the tran- that, that is in the transfer portal or who has entered the transfer portal this offseason. So what I did was, and we're going to talk about this in segment two with the tight ends. We're going to talk about this in segment three with the offensive line. So quarterbacks, and I and I thought about this today. You're not going to land the best quarterback in the country in the transfer portal because the best quarterbacks are going to stay at the schools they're at. You're not going to land. Uh, if, for instance, if this was last year, you weren't going to land Bryce Young. You weren't going to land C.J. Stroud. First off, they weren't going to transfer because they're the best quarterbacks. They were going to stay committed to programs like Alabama and Ohio State. Again, newsflash, and I hate to break this news to you, Cincinnati is not yet at the caliber recruiting as Ohio State and Alabama. But what is interesting is the quarterbacks that are in the transfer portal, they can become really good. Two classic examples are Justin Fields and Joe Burrow. Justin Fields, we didn't really we knew who he was, but he hadn't had a lot of playing time. You didn't know he was going to be as great as he turned out to be at Ohio State. Joe Burrow hadn't seen the field much at Ohio State in his three seasons there. Transfers to LSU, he wasn't great till his second season. So even the best quarterback transfers who pan out They aren't great to begin with. And so that's why, like, your quarterbacks, like, 
I think when I think of quarterbacks who transfer, I think about Wilton Spate to UCLA from Michigan or Sam Hartman from Wake Forest to Notre Dame. Now that's a big time get, but you're not going to land a quarterback who's going to have great Heisman odds right away. Those are earned over time. And that's why if you're not impressed by Emory Jones, what else did you expect? The Bearcats aren't going to get whoever the best quarterback is. That's just not how it works. Last year, if the Bearcats were going to get somebody in the transfer portal, the quarterback, which I, I, they did not, but they weren't going to get Bryce Young, or actually, yeah, they didn't meant Brian, excuse me. They weren't going to get um, Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud or J.T. Daniels or because they're, they just simply aren't at the Power 5 level yet. Quarterbacks who transfer – typically would want to play at a power five level. And that's why you've seen, look at this year's transfer portal and look at the quarterbacks. Now, where I'm going to get to here is I think it's a terrible idea if Cincinnati goes out and gets a power five quarter, gets a transfer quarterback again. That would hinder the development of Emory Jones. That would hinder the development of Ben Bryant. We don't think you can start this year. And by saying that, you're saying that he's not even going to be able to start next year. That's not a good position for him to be in. What is a good position is if you go out or don't go out and not sign a quarterback. The quarterback room to me should be set. It's going to come down to Jones and Bryant. Prater and and Drogosh will get their chances, absolutely. But what's interesting to me is that if you go out and get somebody else, even if you as a fan are not happy or impressed with the quarterback room, I'm sorry, they're not going to. Because they can't do that to Emory Jones. That is going to cause a lot of problems in an already deep quarterback room. And look at the transfers at quarterback this year and where they've gone to. First off, you've got Sam Hartman, Wake Forest to Notre Dame, DJ Uyagule, Clemson, Oregon State, Devin Leary, NC State to Kentucky. Sam Heward, Washington to Cal Poly. That's interesting. Walker Howard, LSU to Ole Miss, SEC to SEC. Emory Jones, we know that. Jake Plummer. I wonder if that's Jake Plummer's son, uh, former Denver Broncos quarterback. Cal to Louisville. Uh, Colin Schley, Kent State to UCLA. Tanner Mordecai, SMU to Wisconsin. Luke Fickle. Uh, Keaton Slovis, or Caden Slovis, how you pronounce his name. Pitt to BYU. That'll be interesting when the Bearcats play there late September. JT Daniels, West Virginia to Rice. Spencer Sanders, Oklahoma State to Ole Miss. I mean, Graham Mertz goes from Wisconsin to Florida. So the point here is that the point here is this quarterbacks who transfer, but they aren't great quarterbacks yet. They can become that. I mean, you look at other quarterbacks who have done Russell Wilson was a transfer from NC State to Wisconsin. Really one of the first great quarterbacks who transferred in his collegiate career and ended up being really good. So Jalen Hurts was another example. We, we knew, knew who Jalen Hurts was. Caleb Williams, same way. But they weren't that great until they got to school. Emory Jones is not great yet. He could be great this season. I'm very hopeful for what he can do. But if you're not happy with the quarterback room, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not going to get another quarterback. This is who you have. But one position where I could see a need in the second window is tight end. We'll talk about that after I explain to you how this episode of Locked On Bearcats is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. You see, the tournament is heating up, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and sign up today to claim your no-sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss your shot at no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Tight ends. 
It's a position that has been one of prominence for Cincinnati over the last 15 years, from Brent Selleck to Travis Kelsey to Josiah DeGuara and then to Josh Wiley and Leonard Taylor. But you look at the tight end room right now. Shema Mateer, Peyton Singletary leading the way. Ask yourself the same question you asked about the quarterbacks. Are you happy with who you have at that position? If you are, great. If not, then yes, this is where you could go into the transfer portal. Now, what I would warn you is this. What I would warn you about is, would you be hindering the development of Taylor and Wiley? I'm sorry, not Taylor and Wiley, of Mateo and Singletary. Because you don't want to do that. But here's the other line of thinking here. College football is about putting the best players out there on the field. If you don't think you're going to be able to get much out of Mateo and Singletary, one of them starting, or both of them, then go out and get somebody in the transfer portal. Here's a list of tight ends in the transfer portal that I went through as far as who could maybe be be a, a key addition. The best tight end that I looked at is... Varkius, Varkius Gums, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, from North Texas. Last year, 34 catches, 458 yards, and five touchdowns. If you compare that to Josh Wiley and Leonard Taylor last year, and obviously there was a lot of frustration from fans as to why they weren't incorporated into game plans more often, but or in a more prominent role. Last year, last year, Josh Wiley and Leonard Taylor. Wiley had 32 catches for 326 and three touchdowns. Taylor had 18 for 170 and two. So Gums has better stats than both Wiley and Taylor did last year. If you want to keep the long line of tight ends here in Cincinnati, I would suggest... I would suggest going out and getting a guy like Gums. Someone who, yes, played at the G5. But keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. You are still, okay, you are still not far removed from playing at the G5 level. And while, yes, you are joining the Big 12, you are still not that far removed from playing at the G5 level where it is okay to get somebody like that. And there are G5 transfers who will transfer to Power 5 schools and make that team better. Like Mike Oresco said, and I and I don't think this is as this doesn't hold much truth in football as it does in basketball. But the power, but the gap between P5 and G5, particularly the American or Conference USA. Now, Conference USA is going to be diminished in terms of how good it is because it's losing all of its teams to the American. But what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is, it's still okay to go out and get a guy like Var- Varkius Gums, especially after what he did last season. And tight ends, yes, not every program is going to have tight ends like Georgia has in Washington, McConkey, and and Brock. Or I'm sorry, yeah, um, Darnell Washington and Brock Bowers. Not every school is going to have that, but. That doesn't mean you can't go out there and get somebody like a Varkius Gums who can help your tight end room. And then Singletary and Mateo, there's not as much pressure on them. I'm not sure how much we're going to get from the tight ends in game plans this season. But what I'm saying is, and hopefully Scott Satterfield knows this, but Cincinnati has a long line of success with tight ends. And it has been that way through four different head coaches. Kelly, Butch Jones, Tommy Tuberville even, and Luke Fickle. So just because the coaches are are different doesn't mean that the tight ends have not been a staple of this program. They have been. And you hope that can continue this season. 
And so if you're if you're going to ride it with Mateo and Singletary, fine. I haven't seen them practice. I haven't been full disclosure to a spring practice yet. I'm going to hopefully be at the spring game. So we'll see what that looks like. But if you are not happy with the guys who they have right now, and that's totally fine if you're not. If you are not happy with the guys they have right you have right now, then look at the transfer portal. You have Varkius Gums from North Texas. You've got Micah Hiltz from Texas State, who had 13, 174, and a touchdown last year. Alex Line from Arizona, 10 for 138 in 2021. You've got Cole Taylor from LSU. You have other guy. you have um, Malcolm Epps, who one season at USC, he's played five seasons, by the way, 20 catches for 232 yards and uh, two touchdowns in one season. So that's really good. There are options out there. Now, would they transfer from USC to Cincinnati? I don't know. I mean, Isaiah Collier went committed to USC. So there's a good opportunity here. All right. So I've asked you about tight ends. And again, I don't want there to be a situation where you're hindering the development of the tight ends. College football is about putting the best guys out there. Clearly, Varkius Gums is the winner here. He could come in and be an immediate starter. Do you want that? We'll find out in the second transfer portal window what happens. Coming up, what should the Bearcats look for in an offensive line in the second window of the transfer portal? We'll talk about that after we hear from two of our sponsors. Offensive line. It is a position that has been what has been a driving force for this program for 20 years. And it's so interesting. When we talk about transfer portal and free agency at the NFL level, and in this city, all we talk about in free agency and the transfer portal is offensive line. And that's not the most fun talk, but it's what wins here. Or it's a problem that has been attempted to be addressed for the last three off seasons now, if you're the Bengals. Like when I, when I, when I did a college football, when I did the college football free agency topic last week and I threw out to you, okay, I threw out to you, you know, if you had a list of needs for the Bearcats in free agency, who would you take? And I, for one, threw out, you know, offensive line. And the Bengals went out and got theirs in Orlando Brown. What's interesting to me is that the offensive line is still in need. I I do think the offensive line needs addressed. And that means probably getting one or two guys, maybe three, in the next transfer portal window. Now, there are over 500 offensive linemen probably in the transfer portal. If you go on Athlon's website and look at the players in the transfer portal, you'll find the offensive line would probably take up 10 pages on Microsoft. So I didn't go through every single one. But ask yourself this question. Are you comfortable with the five off- with the offensive linemen in this room for this coaching staff to find the right combination of players? If, you're, if, your, answer is, if your answer is no, then this team needs to go out and find an offensive lineman with experience. I think that's what stands out to me here. What has enabled Cincinnati to have a good offensive line, and maybe not so much last year, but definitely 2018, 2019 was a bit of a down year. They had some injuries up front. They had some struggles. 20 and 21, they were excellent. So for the better part of the last five years, you have had a great offensive line. Why? Because you had experience with Morgan James, and Cole Cal and uh, Calhoun, what's the name? Cole Calhoun, I think. I, I should know that. Um, guys like, you know, in 2020 with James Hudson and, you know, Jeremy Cooper and, 
your offensive line, Chris Ferguson, and then 2021 with John Williams, and Jake Renfro, and Dylan O'Quinn, and Darius Harper. I mean, there were a lot of experienced guys up front. So what is important here is getting another offensive lineman with experience. Because you're going to have a totally different look offensive line this year. I get Luke Kandra's experience. I get that Gavin Gerhardt is returning. But that does not mean that your offensive line is going to be magically fine. It's not. What it is, in my opinion, is you need someone with experience to provide that stability. Right now, do you have confidence in this coaching staff finding the right combination of five offensive linemen? The offensive linemen that are here. I don't know. And the reason why I don't know is because I haven't seen a lot of the guys who are still in this room. Yes, they got Luke Andrew, but the other offensive linemen they got, they don't have a lot of experience. So go out and get an offensive lineman that either A, has played at the Power 5 level for a couple seasons, maybe hasn't been a full-time starter, but gets a lot of playing time, or B, who started at a really good group of five team like North Texas and has started every game for two or three seasons and then bring him up to the Big 12. That's a guy that I want. I don't want someone who... I don't want someone who hasn't had a lot of experience. That's not going to help. What's going to help here is having someone who's played the position before. Someone who understands terminology, blocking, schemes. Maybe go on and get another offensive lineman from Louisville. or Someone from the ACC. Someone who knows Satterfield. Maybe someone who was recruited by Scott Satterfield. (coughs) Excuse me. But that's what I would do. Offensive line is probably still the biggest position of need. And Scott Satterfield, being a former quarterback, has to know that this program is going to go out and get some more offensive linemen. Unless some offensive linemen flourish in camp, which Russ has said that it's still it's still working out a little. It, it, they're still you know finding their stride and their rhythm. This program will go out and get another lineman or two in the second window. One with experience. Preferably who's played at the Power 5 level, but I'll take someone who's had a couple seasons of starting at the G5 level. I'll end with this. Landers Nolly, I didn't mention this yesterday, but on Monday, Landers Nolly announcing that he's going to declare for the NBA draft while maintaining his collegiate eligibility. If you ask me right, I think this is totally fine. I think it's understandable. I think it's very rational. I, he wants to see where he stands. Could he land in the first round this year? Maybe. But I do see there I do see the benefit of him coming back and getting a season of playing time at the power at a power five gain a lot more exposure, playing in the Big 12, and boosting his stock to maybe being a lottery pick. Do you want that if you're Landers Holly? This reminds me a lot of Jaron Cumberland. He declared for the NBA draft. Maybe it was because of John Brandon. Maybe it was because he was going to do that all along. But he came back. Nolly hopefully will too. What I would tell you is don't be concerned about, don't be concerned about, don't be concerned about him declaring for the draft. It's only March 29th. And there's still a long way to go here. And I, I, I am still very hopeful that he's going to come back. I think he will. I think he's good enough to go pro, but not yet. He's, I mean, he can come back and get more exposure in West Miller's system, more opportunity in the Big 12 to get exposure, to play on bigger stages, to play in a Power 5 conference against better competition. Then he played with the Memphis. Then he played with the Cincinnati so far. And then he, when he wasn't getting much playing time at Virginia Tech. So this is where we're at. In the portal window. Or he's in the, excuse me, the NBA draft. Has not signed with an agent, which is good. And we will see what transpires with that. Tomorrow, opening day in Cincinnati. Love opening day. Can't wait. So I'm going to do an opening day show, an opening day theme show. 
First, I'll talk about what opening day means to me. I'll ask what it means to you as a Cincinnatian. Are you excited? Are you still maybe a little apoplectic towards what the Reds have done to you in the last few seasons as a fan? Are you going to the game? How do you spend opening day? I want to hear from you. Tweet at me at Frankie underscore Natty. Message me on Instagram, AlexFrank9 underscore. Email me, Alex3Frank at gmail.com. What does opening day mean to you as a Cincinnatian? What does it mean to you? I want to hear from you. So here's how it's going to work. First segment, we'll do that. I'll give my season predictions for Major League Baseball. Second segment, how Cincinnati can create an opening day-like atmosphere on September 23rd. On September 23rd. If you can figure out what that day has, or what's on that day, you'll know. And you will want to hear how I would create the ideal opening day atmosphere. All right. Then on, then in segment three, I got a segment about John Cunningham and Scott Guggins and something that I've seen over his tenure that's lasted almost four, it's lasted over three years now. I'm going to get into a very interesting conversation there. So an opening day theme show tomorrow. Russ Hellman will join me on Friday, or excuse me, Later Thursday for a live room, although I'm not sure if that's the ideal time to do one. Either tomorrow, excuse me, afternoon or Thursday, or maybe we'll just talk to you all on Friday. We'll figure that out. Anyway, thanks as always for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. How about for your second listen? You check out our brand new podcast, Lockdown College Basketball. Is it really is it really brand new still? I mean, we've had it this whole season, but anyway. Experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court. Plus, hear from big-name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. For Locked on Bearcats, I'm Alex Frank. Have a great, great, great rest of your day. It is Jersey Mike's Day of Giving. If you want to go out and get a sub from Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. Maybe Danny DeVito inspired you. Hashtag not sponsored, but um, just throwing that out there. Um. So, I'm on Twitter at Frankie underscore Natty. Actually, I already said my social media, didn't I? But if you didn't hear, uh, at Frankie underscore Natty, Instagram, AlexFranknet underscore, and email, Alex3Frank at gmail.com. Frankie underscore Natty is my Twitter. You already know that. And Lockdown Bearcats is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. For Lockdown Bearcats, I'm Alex Frank. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll be back with you tomorrow right here on Locked on Bearcats.